couple weeks ago, I posted a video on my initial reviews of the Bowflex 552 adjustable dumbbells. And since then, people have been asking me, you know, what's my further experience with it? What exercises do I do? Blah, 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 blah. So here's my follow-up video. By the way, I'll link that original video down in the description box below. If you guys don't know me, my name is Gia. I'm the creator of Do It Well. We make crave-worthy protein treats like cinnamon rolls and bread. And I just like to eat, laugh, and lift. <laughs> Welcome. If you guys are watching this video and you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and share it with your friends because that really helps me out. And I'm hoping that I'm putting out content that is helpful you starting with some of the downsides well because why would we start with the good stuff <laughs> as you guys probably saw in my original video the dumbbells are actually longer than your typical dumbbells so the range of motion that you normally get when you're using regular dumbbells is a little bit shortened because for example when you're doing shoulder presses the top of the dumbbells will hit a lot sooner at the top of your press hello <laughs> can you see me hi it's awkward hey. what's up friends um so one of the issues, awkward angle, one of the issues that I've had the most, and I haven't had it too often because I learned from my first few times, if you do not align the, the arrows on the dumbbell in this dial, um, the dumbbell will not lift at the weight that you set it to. So remember, when you're using these dumbbells, you change the weight setting by changing the dial. So that's 12.5 pounds, now 12.5 pounds, right? And then you can lift the dumbbell up and it leaves the rest of the remaining plates on the base. If you do not properly align the arrow that is on the dumbbell versus what's on the dial, even if it's just a smidge off, you will not be able to pull that dumbbell up. So that can be really dangerous, because imagine you're expecting to lift a really light weight, and so you're just gonna jerk it up because you're like, ah, it's really light. That can cause a lot of injury. That's the main issue that I've had with it. The other thing is, for whatever reason, when the dumbbell is set to the max weight, sometimes it gets stuck to the base. So both sides are set to 52.5. I make sure they're aligned because they're locked in. But for sometimes it gets stuck to the base and you kind of have to wiggle it out. Those are the main issues. Those are the main issues that I've seen with it. Now let's get down to the fun part. <laughs> dumbbell exercises you can do with the Bowflex 552 Just About Dumbbell Series. <laughs> Uh, you know, you can do all the, the majority of the normal, normal dumbbell exercises, except you do have to compensate. And I'll just show you a couple of those things um, that I compensate for um, just because of the length of the dumbbell. Of course, for this demo, I'm gonna use lighter weight just because I'm talking to camera and I don't wanna be dangerous about it, you know what I mean? So the first one that I think is a duh for everybody that you probably have to compensate on is shoulder presses. So normally when I do shoulder presses, and by the way, you have to think about, my frame is probably different from a lot of other people's frames, right? Guys might have, anybody may have shoulder, wider shoulders than me, wider hips than me, smaller hips than me, et cetera, et cetera. So this may not be the case for anyone. If you've got shoulders in the rock, then these are probably tiny, tiny um, dumbbells for you. Not the case for me. When it comes to shoulder presses, these dumbbells hit way too soon for me. I normally like to end with my arms about like this. So instead of doing standard dumbbell presses like this, I will do... Hey friends, this is Gia from the future. Pardon the interruption. I am actually re-uploading this video because I want to make a correction. In the original video, you'll see that I accidentally called a exercise the Arnold Press, where in which it's not the Arnold Press, it's a shoulder press variation, where you bring your wrists and you twist them inward. You'll, sh you'll see that in a bit. But I also wanna upload this video because I feel like if I'm gonna talk about exercises, I better be at least using the right terms, especially for people that are not familiar. Um, and of course, I wanna make sure that I'm giving honor to the people in the right way. So Arnold Schwarzenegger made the Arnold Press and I want to give him credit. This is actually not an exercise that I typically do with the Bowflex dumbbells because it is, the dumbbells are a little bit too wide for me and my shoulder width for this exercise. Here is the Arnold Press. You start with your palms facing towards you and you bring it up and down. That's an 
Arnold Press. If you watched the original and hope you enjoy the re-upload, I'm out. Back to the original. Which is simply shifting my wrists inward so that I can get my arms closer together at the top. This is another exercise I like to do, Scott presses. That's Scott presses, those are for your delts. The important thing about Scott presses is do your best to keep that angle the same as you're moving your arm and really just using your delt to do that workout. The other thing I really like about these dumbbells is the dials on the ends are actually pretty small. So if you wanted another variation of a dumbbell curl or another way to hold a dumbbell, because as you guys know, doing exercises is a lot also about changing up your angle sometimes to switch it up for your muscles and keep them excited and they don't know what's going on so they have to start growing and get ready. Um, you can use those dials to actually hold the dumbbell and do your curls this way. versus hammer curl, for example. And by the way, when I'm doing hammer curls, I can't do it keeping my wrist at this angle because the dumbbell hits. So I will break wrist angle just a little bit so the dumbbell goes above my shoulder. If you have longer forearms than me, maybe you don't have that problem. <laughs> the other thing that you guys can do with dials is of course things like front raises. If you guys are trying to use the dumbbells as replacements for bar barbells, that's going to be pretty hard because barbells, your hands are fixed in a position and the barbell is kind of holding your hand in place. Whereas in dumbbells, you're actually going to have to try to control it, right? So if you're, for example, trying to do a barbell row with these dumbbells, I can't personally do it. So I will do variations of the row where in which instead of having my hands positioned like this, they're positioned in this angle. Instead of this, dumbbell rows. When it comes to legs, these dumbbells are great for even goblet squats. So holding the dumbbell like this and squatting. But here's the thing I actually really like about these dumbbells that you probably wouldn't be able to do with other dumbbells. You see how this dumbbell is wider and depending on how many plates you have here, you can hold the dumbbell like this and do squats. Hello, it's me on the floor again. The other thing that I think a lot of people maybe don't realize is the, these plates that are actually left over after the dumbbells are taken out of the base is that they're removable. <laughs> so you can actually add these as uh, additional weight or use them as exercises for different things. For example, if I'm guessing this is one pound, two pounds, let me weigh it. This end piece here is a 1.6 pounds. So it's actually really great for something like IYTs, which I'll show you in a little bit, you know, like kind of just small muscle movement, even for your rotator cuffs, right? If you're just warming up your rotator cuffs and you want something super, super light. Because the lowest setting that the actual dumbbells goes to is five pounds. So 1.6 pounds for minor activation work like this, which is actually really important to do, uh, is a really great option. IYTs that I was mentioning looks like this. And trust me, you don't want to use heavy weight for this because you want to in proper form. Lightweight is way enough. I, I, pew pew, pew pew. And you can see if it's a frisbee. Don't, don't, <laughs> it's not a frisbee, don't see if it's a frisbee. Not even with respect to these dumbbells in particular, but any dumbbells as a whole, if you don't have a lifting bench where you can... Darla. What might be difficult, guys, though, is if, not even just for these dumbbells themselves, but for any dumbbells as a whole, if you don't have a um, lifting bench where you can do chest presses on, you can do your hip thrusts on, uh, getting heavy weight might be really hard if you're going to use the floor to do a chest press, and I'll show you why. So if you're on the floor and you want to do a chest press, imagine trying to bring 52.5 dumbbells and going, uh, uh, <laughs> and lifting it and bring it down. 
And of course, to get your arms closer, you'll have to compensate again. And close your wrists at the top of the knee. You also can't go past parallel, which is not such a bad thing. But imagine now then trying to figure out how to get these to the floor without going sideways, right? You would have to do something like this and bring them up. That's just a dumbbell problem as a whole. Not a bow flex adjustable. Why I've had two dumbbell problems. <laughs> for hip thrust, it's the same thing, right? If you're gonna try to bring 52.5 pounds, it might be hard for some people to bring it up. In fact, if it's not a weight you're super comfortable with lifting, I suggest not to do it because it's a very one side dominant pull and you can actually end up pulling muscles if you're not if you're not doing it properly. By the way, if you guys have a cooler, you can use it as somewhat of a bench. I'll put the video here of me doing that. Um, but you just have to make sure that the cooler can actually hold your weight plus the dumbbells, right? So I'm around 150 pounds, 5'4", um, and the dumbbells can go up to 105 pounds. So I got to figure out, can it hold 255 pounds if I'm doing both 52.5 pounds, just max, right? Um, the other thing is, the coolers are typically shorter, so you have to sit your bum at the, just the edge of the cooler. I'm 5'4", and the cooler is sometimes too short for me and my head might hang off. So if you're taller than me, that might be a really hard thing to do. But just gotta innovate, right? Thank you, my friends, for watching. I hope that was super helpful. And I hope you're getting your gains with your 1.6 pound plate. I don't know why I have a hard time talking. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button. I'll be posting videos every Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Get notified, hit that notification bell. Boom, boom, boom. Hit that like button, share it with your friends, do all that jazz, we can be friends. <laughs> if you guys have any other specific questions or maybe exercises, specific exercises you want me to see me do with these dumbbells, just let me know, put it in the comments below, and I'll do my best. See ya.